From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It's Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, the Knolls walk into Gainesville and batter the Gators. It's a time to believe. Can you believe it? Nick Saban on Capitol Hill stumping to try to save the soul of college football. And uh, apologies to one of our Big Ten fans. Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida, cptallybar.com, the website. If you don't feel like typing, I don't blame you. Typing's a lot. Hit the QR code on your screen. Takes you right to the website. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. for only $8.99. On Wednesday, five-piece chicken wings and french fries. That's all you got to know. No choosing. It's laid out for you. The best wings in town and some fantastic french fries. Only $8.99 from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. today. Go over. Take advantage over at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. And don't forget, tomorrow, bingo night, 7 o'clock. Test your bingo skills to win drinks and prizes. Always a good time at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida, 2475 Appalachia Parkway. Warchant.com, you're also a sports sports source. Watch you the thumbs up, everybody. Won't you give us a five-star ring and review? Feel the good vibes. Corey Clark in the house. Warchant.com, lead writer, senior writer, penning columns late on a Tuesday night after being an awesome dad, picking his kid up from hopefully a couple dubs in some uh, JV baseball on Tuesday night. Fingers crossed. Let me know if this makes me a bad dad. So, uh... I bought the tickets, a $5 ticket, to watch uh, my son's JV baseball game. And then they announced the starting lineup, which they don't normally do at these games. And Brady's played in every game so far this season. But he missed practice on Monday because he had a headache, so I had a feeling that he might not be playing. But anyway, they announced the starting lineup. He's not in it. His old man gets on the road. (laughs) What am I doing here? Would I rather watch Florida State play Florida in baseball or a JV Gwinnett County JV baseball game? So I chose the uh, former, and I went home and watched uh, Florida State play Florida. Does that make me a bad dad or a bad? How about this? Does it make Brady a bad teammate that his dad <laughs> thinks like that? No, not at all. Okay, uh, it makes you a fantastic lead senior writer, right? Uh, and teaches uh, Brady that you know if he wants to spend quality time with his father, who's a busy man, who's got get on the, the field, yeah, earn man. your way on the field, be undeniable. Yeah. Don't give him an excuse to keep you off the field. <laughs> exactly. Let's go. I hope Leonard gives those guys a, a really impassioned speech before they take the floor in Washington D.C. later today as well, Corey. So. Hopefully uh, somebody can maybe clip that up and give yeah. it to Coach Hamlet yep. that inspire him as he talks to the boys. Uh, but LinkedIn need a lot of uh, coaching up, man. Um, I don't know. I don't want to go big, too big picture. I guess let's just get dive right into it. Florida State improves to fifteen and zero. Fifteen and zero. Twelve eight win over Florida. I don't even really know if the final score was indicative of just how dominant Florida State was. They had you know a little bad inning there, but you know they they still prevailed. Uh, knock off the Gators, who are ranked eighth in the country, and Florida State is not ranked other than, I think, maybe 21st in the polls. Um, for you, uh, is it the offensive explosion just continuing against Florida or a strong outing from Andrew Armstrong and some pretty decent bullpen uh, relief despite the fact that uh, one of those innings things got away from them? Yeah, no, I think the I think the um... – the story there is in that game is just the offense. Like I, I know Florida didn't pitch their their weekend starters. Obviously, neither did Florida State. Nope. Um, and but Florida has arms for days. I mean, the guy they had in the last inning that I think struck out the side was throwing ninety five. Um, so yeah, they got they got dudes just because they're. Uh, I mean, they use some real bullpen arms, and they got all their guys. I mean, if you're pitching at Florida, you can play. Um, and so I think to me that is the headline of that game is, man, we we aren't just seeing things, and this isn't fluky, and this isn't just taking advantage of uh, not great uh, competition. This offense is legit, and by God, this offense is elite because it does not stop. Like I, I wrote my column, Diomez Ross might not have a worse game in his college career. My man went 0 for 5, grounded into a bases loaded double play with nobody out, turned a single into an inside the park home run on defense. He was not good at all, and they put a 12 spot on the board. Their leadoff hitter, who's a very good player, and is going to have a lot of really big hits for this team, 
went 0 for 5, and they still put up 12 runs. Uh, and, and could it, you know, again, they had a bases loaded with nobody out and didn't score. They were real close to scoring, what, 15, 16 runs maybe? Mm. I mean, that, it just, it, it's one through nine, man. Uh, uh, Lodi's had a Lodi's had a couple of well the one double was maybe the biggest hit of the game I thought other than Tibbs's home run you're up 7-0 you immediately come back and give up a grand slam they're all unearned runs right they're four five unearned runs um because I guess of the pass ball um the 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 inning started with a strikeout but he reached and then it ended up keeping the inning going and they give up Dorsey comes in and gives up the grand slam um for for them to come right back and score after after leaving the bases loaded in the fifth inning, with the fifth bases loaded, nobody out, don't score. Lodis gets that huge double in the gap that kind of broke the game back open again. Yep, yep. And then it just you know then I, I think that kind of took the air out of Florida's sails, and they just keep adding on. Man, I, I just you got a Lodis who bats eighth. Sometimes he bats ninth. Um, the the catchers with West and Holbrook are are very good offensive catchers. That is a great platoon offensively, defensively not stellar. Uh, not only did he have the pass ball, Jackson West, hold on to the ball on the inside oh. the park home run. The game's over, yep. man. Just don't let him – I mean, that just, the ball was there in on plenty time. of time, yeah. 15 feet to spare. Um, so, you know, clean that up a little bit. But who's the weak link, man? I know. Well, I guess Who is it, it? That goes to your point about the fact that they left the bases – they had bases loaded, no outs, and they are able to score three runs the very next inning because that lineup is just nasty. You know, like they, they loaded the bases towards like the middle and bottom of their lineup and they couldn't make anything happen. You know, Diamas Ross grounds into the, the double play mainly. And then that next inning, they start off with James Tibbs leading off. Yeah. And then it goes for Aaron Furrow and then Dinges and Cantu and Lodi's. Like, Dinges too, man. Yeah, I man. think he had a sack fly in that game, which again. that In the second inning, it's hard to jump. You like I thought that to me was, I know they end up scoring like, you know, three more runs when they, they really needed to, to to get some distance. But that second inning to me, that was like the real heartening thing to see because we know they can hit all these these extra bases you point out their slugging percentage but that second inning those three runs were scored basically because they had a sack they had a they had a, a fly ball that they were able to move both runners 90 feet and then din just has a sack fly to bring in the first run of the game and then on it on an e4 which i don't even know how you score two guys on yeah. an e4 and they they were able to but yeah din just had that sack fly in, in the second inning to get the uh the game started for him yeah, so that I mean, they just they they do some little things pretty well. Like I said, they put the ball in play. I think honestly, I think their last five outs were strikeouts, but they had a seven run lead when that happened. Like up until the final five outs of the game, uh, Florida State had struck out four times. Meanwhile, for the game, Florida they end up striking out nine times. For the game, Florida State struck out fifteen Florida batters. Um, a lot of big ones too, with the bases loaded, the kid trying to dip his elbow in to to draw the to draw the hit by pitch when it was a strike. Um, they, I'm glad the umpires got that right. But yeah, I, I think so. That's what I wrote. Is like, look, man, it's a, and I don't want to give away everything. I'm not going to give away the cow when you no, can get no, the no. whatever it is. No. But um, uh, you know, it's a midweek game, right? So in the in the grand context of college baseball. It's not it's not the biggest thing in the world. Like Duke just won two out of three at number one Wake over the weekend. Then comes home and loses to Ryder. Like college baseball is goofy and midweek games you don't put a ton of stock in them usually. But one, you do when it's a rival. Mm-hmm. And two, you do when you're fourteen and zero, but you're about to take up a huge step up in competition on the road and you wanna see really kind of where you stand. And you want to have a, a fan base that starts to really believe. Well, you go on the road and put up a 12 spot against the Gators. The last time Florida State scored 12 runs against Florida, Buster Posey was the catcher. So when you start doing stuff like that, then, yeah, you're like, okay, now this team could be a lot better than we thought, and, oh, my gosh, this coach might be incredible. That's where – that's what, and that's just one win. I get it. It's one game. Uh, it's on top of 14 other ones, but this was by far the biggest win of the season. But it kind of just because it reinforces what we thought we were seeing already against a real against real competition. Now don't go over that out there this weekend and lay an egg in the start of ACC play. But if they take care of business, win the series like they should against Notre Dame, you hope they do. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I just, it's I, I texted you during the game, Aslan. Like they look like Florida looks yeah. physically. Mm-hmm. When they get in the lot, when they get in the box, it's like, yeah, this is what a Florida State baseball team should look like. 
They're big, physical, powerful men. They don't look like they just got off the high school JV team. And I'm not saying that guys like that can't hit. Clearly, if my son ever makes it anywhere, he ain't going to be a physical freak. Um, but I'm saying, like, they've got physicality, 6'2", 6'3", 6'1", 200 pounds, all up and down the lineup that can move. It's just, man, you don't – they haven't had a lot of Daniel Cantus. That guy's a monster, and he's batting seventh. Lodis is a big kid. They're all they're all big besides Ross. Uh, yeah, it's just that was uh, – so they looked the part physically. And they battered Florida pitching. I mean, they had great at bats all night. It was just it was encouraging. Doesn't mean they're going to win the Omaha, but it's encouraging that this program has taken such a big step in one year. Well, yeah, and, and to the you know the point I was trying to, to kind of start us on here with that as well is the fact that like yeah they they are hitting extra base hits. Um, you know, Lodis hits that double in the sixth inning with two outs. Like it's timely hits, right. but they're also doing all the little things smart that you were pointing out and underscoring what I was saying. And like then they're playing pretty clean in the field other than Diamez Ross, you know, getting a little, maybe, you know, two ahead of his skis there, which is crazy. Cause they, they did not, there's no errors. Florida state did not get charged with any errors in Gainesville last night. Uh, so go figure on that. Yeah. The, the only, they gave up five hundred runs, but that's because the pass it was a pass ball, which yeah. I guess count as unearned runs. Yeah. But you know, like Cam Smith is still fielding well at third base. They're still strong up the middle and, and to see all that sort of stuff. And the fact that like, I know they did the bunt that you didn't like, um, coming after you know getting well, five. it didn't end up mattering because he walked. He worked a walk, yeah. but yeah, I didn't like the. I didn't like. I never liked bunting on a two zero count. But they did some of that Lodi's stuff. Did. They did some of that stuff later on in the game, and, and it kept the game going. It just you know I don't know if they're gonna be able to mash their way in, into where they want to go. But it feels like no matter where the game's gonna take them, they're capable of figuring it out. They're just they're that sound. And like that fourth inning was scary. I mean, they were up seven uh, zero, yeah. and then it becomes they hang five runs on you on the grand slam. I don't know if you should have given you know when they. Took out Joe Charles. I was like, you know what, you know, let him keep working through it. What's the worst? You know, he's gonna do walk somebody in to score a run. We, you know, don't let a grand slam happen. And they let a grand slam happen. But um, you know, the fact that they didn't let that get in their way, especially after they loaded bases themselves and weren't able to bring anything across. I, I'm pull up the box score. I remember this game. It, it was 2019. I think they were still mired in the losing streak they had in Gainesville, which, you know. You talking about midweek games, maybe not being the biggest thing, but it is your rival, and it was in Gainesville where they've struggled mightily for the longest yeah. time. Yeah, that game in 2019, they were up six to zero in the bottom of the fifth. They lost that game twenty to seven. Yeah, you know, like yep. it, 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 this team now is, is so much in the image of like Link Jarrett. Now this roster is completely flipped for all intents and purposes. That and we know what he did at Notre Dame, so. The fact that he's flipped it, they look this good. You know that he's had great, great success elsewhere. That's why I think that the optimism, at least for me right now, is so sky high because uh, every reason to believe is there for you right now after this game, I feel like. Yeah, and I, I you know, going back to the pitching, uh, I was impressed with the pitching. I mean, I don't know what they ended up giving up, but I'm going to look it up real quick. Uh, I want to see want? what they uh, just earned runs. Three. Three, yeah, and two of those were uh, on Lauk, I guess is how we pronounce it. Yep, correct. The kid that came at the end that only happened because of an inside-the-park home run that was a single. Yep. Those were the only – so they gave up essentially one earned run uh, to a really good offense. Like, I don't know what Florida is, is pitching-wise, but that's a very good offense. And you gave up one earned run. And what I really liked – and I know – trust me, folks, we were not going to spend 30 minutes just on baseball – one baseball game. Uh, there's 40 more to go. Uh, maybe hey, maybe 60 more to go, Aslan. My they might man. get hot in go. ACC. They might mm-hmm. win their regional supers and win it all in Omaha. But um, Carson Dorsey, so he comes in. Is it his second pitch he gives up a grand slam? I think so, yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I guess I don't know his backstory. I don't know how good he was in high school. I'm going to assume he was pretty darn good. I assume he hasn't given up a lot of grand slams in his life, and I can promise you he has never given up a grand slam in an environment like that. <laughs> In a situation like that, when your team had a 7-0 lead and now all of a sudden it's 7-5 to and you still got four innings to go or five innings to go or whatever it was. But, man, talk about responding. Yeah. That was the only hit he gave. He gave up only one more hit the rest of the way. He struck out four of the, what, eight batters he faced. Um, just nothing but heat really either. Like throwing 94 to 95 gas from kind of a weird arm angle. I just thought that said a lot about his moxie to be able to rally and recoup and not melt down after giving up a grand slam. Um, that was that was really cool to see. That You talk about encouraging. Armstrong pitched well, but you know what Armstrong is. 
but Dorsey and then Rowan coming on, and, you know, he's a little wild, but he's wildly effective, and he's a – by God, he's a bulldog. Uh, he's a guy that likes uh, – he, he's one of those dudes that gets fired up and does a little spinny-do after strikeouts. Uh, but I, I was impressed with him too. Like, the, they've never been in a moment like that, either one of those kids. And for them to be in that moment and strike out – what they pitch – Together they pitched strikeouts. Combined. Yeah, but together, yeah. just Dorsey and Rowan pitched three and two thirds innings. And that's seven. So that's eleven eleven guys they faced. They struck out seven of them. Yeah. That was the most uh, strikeouts uh, tied for the most strikeouts that the Gators had this year. All right, well there you go. But I I just like those. I like that what it says about those freshmen in that moment that they handled it like that. You know they have stuff. Clearly that's obvious. Just you could watch them and know they have stuff. But to handle the moment like that. Um, is really is really good to see. That's really really impressive. Uh, defense was solid. I mean, they'd have to make a ton of plays because of all the strikeouts. And that offense plays, man. That mm-hmm. offense is, uh, you know, that there's nothing fluky about that thing. It, it, you know, look, there will be series or or games, certainly games, but maybe even whole series or weeks where they slump a little bit. I don't think there'll be it, weeks. I, think be, I, I can't – they can have a bad midweek and a bad weekend series, but I think by the next time that midweek rolls around, whoever's in that slump will be out of it. Or, yeah, I, a week. Yeah, yeah, I don't see them going weeks. I, I meant like a week. They might have okay. a bad week yeah. uh, or a bad series, a yeah. weekend. But, man, I, it's hard to imagine just with the way they hit, the approaches they have, um, how much solid contact they make that they're going to go in too prolonged a slump. That offense will be there – should be there all season. Um, Provide they and, stay healthy. And they, yeah. they do have some options, but like if you lose Cam or James Tibbs, like those, you know, well, that, sure. that's obviously a, a big deal. But, you know, they've, they've got so many guys that have had hits and RBIs this year that you feel like they could, as long as there's nothing that's going to linger too long, they could probably hold down the fort for a little bit. It, but doesn't it seem like Aslan, and I'm really trying not to get a hold of myself, but it's like I've, like I've no, covered this program for 15 years now or 16 years, whatever it is. They never play well against Florida. No. Ever. And for this guy in his second year after that all-time awful season a year ago, the worst season of program history, to now be 15-0 and and have just put up 12 runs in Gainesville and had some freshman arms kind of light them up uh, from a pitching side, you start to think, okay, is Link Jarrett, like, awesome? Do you have one of the best coaches in the United States? I mean, I think we thought that when they hired him, but you didn't know. And you certainly know how quick it could be. And now all of a sudden you look, and I know it's just 15 games, and I'm really kind of concentrating on just one game, one of the 15. But to, but in one year, there, there were, you, you stack those two teams against each other. Florida is not far and away better than Florida State. They, I mean, obviously Tuesday night they weren't better than them at all. But even if, you, if, you, if those te- teams played 10 or 12 times, it's a pretty even series. Maybe Florida State wins it. Maybe Florida State sweeps them. I don't know. Florida State might be the best team in the country, folks. Who knows? <laughs> but the fact that they've caught up already, and they look like this already in his second year, um, yes, it says something about the transfer portal. I get it. I assume Rising Spears knocking it out of the park with, with some yeah, of these guys. But it's also – it's 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 evaluation. It's fit. And it's, it's, a, it's a development too. But, I mean, it's just all that together. You're like, man, okay – Another game without an error. Um, didn't strike out double digits. Still, you know, I don't know how many times they've struck out more than their opponents this year, but probably not at all. That just, again, you're starting to think like, okay, man, he might be putting in place a really strong – they might be they, they might be getting back to where they were a long time ago. Like right. that's how good he could – that's how good he could be potentially. Cause I, but maybe I'm too far ahead of myself. No, I, I'm out over my so, skis. Man. It's just 15 so. games, but – Man, to go from what they were last year to 15-0 and 0 yep. is, uh, I mean, golly, it's, it makes you wonder how good this guy really is and how good this team can be. I mean, Kyle Peterson said it. He's like, the only thing you can maybe knock Florida State for is bullpen depth. He's like, but that's every single team in the country right now. Right. I mean, that, that's where you'd have to be extremely nitpicky and blind almost to, to try to figure out something to really – dampen the enthusiasm you have for this team after the way they performed on Tuesday night in Gainesville. By the way, the Gators 42nd in the country in scoring, so that's pretty decent. What's uh, Florida State? Um, Florida State is – this I don't think is included what happened this past night, but they were fourth going into that one. Yeah, I assume 12 helped them a little bit. Yeah. Or actually, no, they might. It looks like, yeah, the NCAA's got it listed. They, they've got the 12-8 final listed here. 
So I'm sure it included floor state second in batting average in the nation, yep. sixth in slugging, ninth in OBP, fourth in scoring, seventh in seventh in earned run average, uh, and they're fielding at 980 right now, which is 27th best in the country. And they've only been thrown out stealing once. Yeah, 25 out of 26, or maybe they got two on Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, 26 so. out of 27 or 27 out of 28, something like that. Yeah, man, it's just they got they got different ways to beat you. I think Cantu is about poised to. Man, he hit the he he hit his ball off the wall, probably as hard as Tibbs hit his ball. Mm. It just he didn't hit it high enough. But that ball was smoked. Yeah. And again, I I remember, and then we're done with baseball. But I remember one of the series you back when Florida State had to go to Florida every year in the supers. Yep, yep. For like a decade, DJ's it was DJ Stewart's last year. So we go. I think Pete Alonso might have been on that Florida team, but he wasn't even like the big their big star at the time. They had that catcher. That uh, Schwartz, maybe. But anyway, it doesn't yeah, matter. JJ but we got there early because there was nothing to do. We were just watching batting practice. And Florida State's got DJ, who hits them into the parking lot. And then everybody else is hitting wall scrapers or ones that short hop the wall. Then we watch Florida take batting practice. And it is like, uh, I don't even know what to say, like a rocket show. <laughs> They're hitting them off the O'Connell Center. They're, you're hearing car alarms go off in the parking lot. I didn't know who Pete Alonzo was at the time, I don't think, but I was like, who is this guy? This guy hits it farther than DJ Stewart. I've never even heard of him or one of the. But anyway, their whole team just hit, just mashed. They looked apart, and it's intimidating. Oh, my God, he hit that one 480. He hit that one 510. That's 470. That's off the – that just hit a woman. Like, all those you, – you, it was a crazy show. It was a crazy laser show in batting practice. And that's what this Florida State team reminds me of now. That I, I, they're probably not as good as that Florida team was. You'd have to look it up to see what year and who all was on that team, but it was loaded. Uh, but you just look in, in uh, like Lodis, Dinges, Ding, Dinges, right? Yeah, Dinges. Uh Obviously, Ferrer, Cam Smith, Tibbs, uh, Cantu, who has not hit a home run yet, but certainly can hit it as far as anyone and will hit a home run or a few this year. It's just – it looks like a one of those monster college baseball teams from uh, many moons ago. Mm. But they can do other things as well, too. They're not just a uh, – it's not just gorilla ball. They can go they, – they can play defense, apparently. They can pitch a little bit. And they could run the bases. But it just, they look the part, man. Yeah. They just so much look the part. Notre Dame comes to town this weekend. ACC opener uh, for, or actually for the Knowles. Uh, Notre Dame coming off a sweep at the hands of Virginia Tech. They took out Radford last night. They play Radford later today as well. But uh, So Notre Dame swept Virginia Tech? No, they, got they, swept? they got swept. They're 10 and 4 oh, okay. on the season. So uh, they lost those games 11 to 3, 10 to 5, and 11 to 8. Oh, so they're not tech. great pitching then. You would think that doesn't bode well. But they're they they're ten and one in their other games then. Yeah, there you go. And All I think right. the following weekend, I think Florida State goes to Clemson. Clemson, so yeah. If you yeah. want to be one of those people that has been hurt too much by Florida State baseball and you really want to wait, uh, we'll let you do that for one more week after Clemson. But then after that, you got to come aboard and be as excited as uh, Corey and myself are. Maybe if you took some Vitamin Energy Mood Plus, that would help you out, everybody. VitaminEnergy.com, promo code WordChamp BOGO, WordChamp B-O-G-O, buy one item, get one of equal or lesser value for absolutely free. I need to see if that also applies to the merch. Uh, somebody uh, copped a T-shirt at a giveaway, uh, and I saw him around town. He's like, hey, man, like, is, is this your company? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, would I be working if I owned Vitamin Energy? I'd be on a boat somewhere. Right. I'm like, it's right. not. He's like, but he's like, I love the shirts. They fit great. So I should maybe see if the, the promo code applies to the merch. But I know it applies to the award-winning, clinically proven vitamin energy, energy shots, energy with benefits. These things are packed with vitamins and nutrients. The Mood Plus has not only 260 milligrams of all-natural caffeine, but chamomile flower extract, lemon balm extract, passion flower extract, valerian root extract. Just puts you in a great state of mind. Remember that time everybody had to drive home at like 6 o'clock in the morning, help my mom move into her new house, and I always end up, you know, clashing horns with my mother, my poor, mm. sweet mother. I took a shot of the Mood Plus beforehand, and I was the best-behaved son I've ever been. So what else do you need? It's clinically proven as well. Vinamarriage.com, promo code Corey. We're champ go. On the way out, Corey, uh, got to do a little forcing of the football, if you don't mind. I don't know if anybody's ever said so much without saying something. Maybe I've done that before on the show, but your thoughts here as we play a clip uh, from our nation's capital, Senator from Texas, Ted Cruz, uh, doing a roundtable of uh, college athletics discussion with uh, numerous important people, including Nick Saban. Uh, Senator Cruz asks him a question, and here's the response and the follow-up. 
how much did the current chaos and state of the law contribute to your decision to retire now? Well, all the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast, and uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their um, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me, you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? So, you know, to me, that was sort of a red alert that we really are creating a circumstance here that is not beneficial to the development of young people. And I, I want their quality of life to be good. I think, as I said before, name, image, and likeness is a great opportunity for them to create a brand for themselves. Um, I'm not against that at all. Um, but to come up with some kind of a system uh, that still can help the development of young people, I think, is paramount to the future of college athletics. What do you think about that, Corey Clark? What if they have, you know, they have, they have salary caps for rookies in every sport. Uh, whoever whoever's the number one pick this year, I assume it's Caleb Williams. There's only so much he can make. Yeah. There's only so much whoever the big European is that gets drafted number one <laughs> in the NBA. Um, there's only so much he can make. Maybe you tell – maybe all these schools, there's only so much they can pay a freshman. I don't know how you'd enforce it. Yeah. I don't know who'd even police it. I don't even know who would even have hand out that edict. But otherwise, what does it matter? He's right. We all know he's right. Um, I would say this. Um, he says that his wife told him that uh, they don't care about any of this. They only want to care how much you're going to pay them. Well, isn't that kind of like a lot of people went to Alabama because they knew they could get to the NFL if they went to Alabama. So it's yeah, but his thing know. was that we would help develop you to make it to that level. But you right, you, but you they don't care also about that sold NFL contract now. You want your money now in an right. NIL deal. But it was still a it was still a decision based on money. Now, it was money three years away, not immediately, but it was still a decision. There, I'm sure there were plenty of players, most a lot of players. Who who wants to live in Tuscaloosa, everyone? <laughs> Are you kidding? So there were a lot of players that would have rather gone to other places. But the promise or the, 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 the potential of making millions of dollars in the future by going to Alabama – and getting developed, sure, but going to Alabama, they made that decision, almost all of it, because of financial reasons. They thought if they went to Alabama, and Lord knows hundreds of them were right, if they went to Alabama, they had a better chance of getting the NFL and, and taking care of their family and providing for their family. So that's why they chose Alabama. Alabama presented that as a reason to come to Alabama. If you come here, your chances of being in the NFL and being a millionaire – uh, go up exponentially than if you go to, say, Tennessee or Florida, wherever you're th else you're thinking about. They sold that. So it's a little hypocritical to, to lament the fact that all these guys want is money when that's what you've been selling for a decade and a half is if you come here, that's your best chance of making a lot of money in the future. That said, we all agree with Nick Saban. It's out of control. I mean, I know he didn't say that, but it, it's all out of control. There, we can – we can wring our hands about it, but it, it it absolutely is what it is. It's 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 just not something that's enjoyable for people that have not accomplished anything uh, to get into getting in bidding wars for kids that might not be any good at all. And again, what I think is worse, Aslan, and I'm gonna I'll beat this drum until it is uh, it has been evaporated. Um, that each year is another bidding war for that player. Yeah. That's my biggest problem. If you win a player's services because you have a really good collective, it needs to be multiple year contracts. It just needs to be. I, I don't know how you can I, I just think these collectives need to um, you know get together. I know that's probably illegal, <laughs> but they, they need to get together and collude and say, guys, we are not giving one year contracts. 
if anybody signs with us, it's going to be for two or three years. At least you know you have a player for two or three years and you can't lose them to someone else. Because, again, nothing wrong with contracts, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with paying players. Kirk Cousins is going to make $45 million this year. But Super Bowl, baby. Super Bowl. How stoked Get, is everybody in the A? Is it buzzing right now? It's not buzzing necessarily, but, man, the quarterback play has been so bad, and you're like, okay, he'll be a steady force. He'll get it to the London. He'll get it to Pitts. Yeah. They'll be a good offense with him. They're not going to win a Super Bowl, but they weren't going to anyway. So, no, they're not exactly buzzing. But he's making $45 million. What's the beauty of, what's the beauty of that is he can't, in November, get a better offer from the Steelers and go there. He's locked. Yeah. And that's what's so chaotic. Is She's right. All the players that you're recruiting, especially at Alabama, I shouldn't say all, most, are being offered lots of money from a bunch of different schools, and if you want them to come to your school, you have to pay up. Who could blame them? I, I seem to remember Nick Saban signing a lot of contracts where he got raises. Who would blame him? I think Texas might have offered him a lot of money 10, 12 years ago, maybe 10 years ago. I feel like he worked himself a nice fat raise from Alabama because of that. So we're all our going rates. We're all market rate, but uh, the problem is Saban – well, I was going to say Saban signed a contract, but what do contracts matter with coaches either? Mm. That's it, man. I, I'm gonna. That's another drum, and I'm done with this. I'm done with talking about this. But really establish contract. Coaches can't bitch about the fluidity of a roster and how a player can leave and there's nothing keeping them there. He can go to the highest bidder. They all go to the highest bidder. So who? You know, Mike Norvell again. I only use him because he's Florida State's coach. He left Memphis for a lot more money. You know, he was it, but, and a significantly credit, better opportunity for his. Correct. You know, correct. But and I was going to say goals. to his credit, I don't. Th I think Alabama could have paid him more than Florida State could have, but he stayed. You know what I mean? Like it's the, the, he. You also have to think about your career. But all of these coaches and uh, mostly you know, assistants, head coaches, you're always looking to better your better yourselves and. None of your contracts are, are uh, multi-year contracts either. They are if you're not, you know, they are if you're not very good. You're going to get all your money if you get if you get fired. But if you leave, your buyout is what a, a tenth of what it what it is. If, you know what I mean? It's just right. so they they don't have a real uh, a leg to stand on when it comes to lamenting the fluidity of rosters and having to to you know have having to re-recruit your roster every year. I bet Michael Offord can relate to that. <laughs> he had to re-recruit his head coach this year, maybe potentially. All these co all these ads and presidents of these good coaches uh, always have to go back to the bargaining board because that's what Jimmy Sexton's going to make them do. And so uh, apparently, players have that power now too. It does make it chaotic and tough to get behind, but just because it's just like they haven't, especially with the freshman man. It's like, what have you done? Who are you to be getting this kind of money? And I wonder, Aslan, do you think the players in the locker room know what the other players are getting? Man, they got to know. I just can't believe they wouldn't know. They probably have an idea, right? Yeah. But I wonder if they know for sure. Like, this is what – or if you're if you're bargaining with ba uh, the battles in, you're like, well, tell me what X, player X is getting because <laughs> yeah. I want to make a 1,000 more than him. Because I'm better than him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wonder if that happens. And you, I want to see the documentation of what he gets. Show it to me yeah. on the Google Drive, the Google hard drive. I want to see it. Freedom of Information Act. Freedom of Information yeah. Act. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is a sunshine state. <laughs> give me that. Give me that information. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, really on the way out. Uh, shout out to our guy, Neuler, uh, which the name Neuler is a combination of Knoll and Boiler. Okay. It'll make sense here in a, in a minute. So our guy um, was having a rough day on Tuesday morning and decided to make a post on the tribal council. And then he listened to our podcast from Monday in which we talked about and maybe denigrated the Purdue boiler makers. Mm. Uh oh, the Purdue slander is out of control. Corey Clark sports historian needs a history lesson. I'm here to uh -oh. give it. Not sure why Purdue's in the crosshairs of every Big Ten topic concerning schools that suck, but I cannot stand idly by any longer. You know who does suck? 
the Hoosiers of Indiana and their stupid candy stripe warm up pants. Amen. Minnesota, WTF have they ever done? Michigan State sucks. Their jerseys are gross. Rutgers? Come on, man. Freaking Rutgers is boring as hell. Northwestern, GTFO. As you can see, if you want to rip a Big Ten team, there are plenty of options. Why must you always pick on my boilers? Black and gold unis are dope. Purdue Pete mascot. Boiler up. Drew freaking Breeze. Len Dawson. Bob Greasy. The cradle of quarterbacks. Leroy Keyes. Mike Allstott. Glenn Big Dog Robinson. Gene Cady and his glorious non-hair. The Big yeah. Maple and the best basketball team in the country. Solid baseball program. Really good golf program. And guess who's beat Notre Dame more than any school in history? Purdue. I can go on. This is just a start. The Purdue slander must end, sir. I mean, I did say Neil Armstrong, right? I don't feel like a lot of our listeners knew that Neil Armstrong was a Purdue alum. I did not know that. You taught me that. Thank you, Corey. I might be wrong. I might have completely dreamt that or made that up. No, but you... I think Neil Armstrong went to Purdue. Uh, so I know a little bit about him. Uh, and look, I, you're right. That's fair. Uh, Minnesota, Northwestern, Purdue, excuse me, but Purdue as well. Uh, throw them all into one big pot of what have they ever done in football. It does not mean they aren't great universities. It doesn't mean that they haven't accomplished things on other uh, other athletic endeavors and other fields. But in the in the sport that we mainly focus on, a lot of the Big Ten, just like frankly a lot of the SEC. Tell me the last time Mississippi State mattered. Um, they haven't done a whole lot where it matters, and it would just be a little. It, it would be uh, very very let's say frustrating and, and irritating if Purdue five years from now is making $50 million a year from football contracts than Florida State, considering what they meant to the sport. I love fair? the thread. No, I, I think we need to come to an agreement here and now that we are going to have Rutgers be the punching Rutgers bag. hasn't been in long enough. I, what about Minnesota? I can deal with Minnesota. They're nice people, though. And they've actually won some national titles. I know a long, long time when ago. What was that? <laughs> Look at the, that was the back 30s. before even white people were allowed to play. <laughs> it was so long ago. It was Native uh, Americans playing football back then. Um, I mean, because he makes – I mean, Drew Brees, Len Dawson, Bob Greasy, that, and Mike Allstott, that probably gets you like, all right, back – And I, he's like he, he says later on the thread, what about Illinois? What have they ever done? And Illinois really hasn't done anything in a That's long, That's a good long point. Time. Illinois has – yeah, but you're Dick, right. But Dick Butkus. I don't – you know, Dick Butkus. Rest in peace, my friend. You're like, right. You know, I, I, I don't know why – you know what? I'm going to say this. This he, this is kind of – it's not even a backhanded compliment. I think he'll, he'll understand this. I think Purdue comes to my mind a lot because they're so good in basketball, which is the sport going on right now. And I always see them on the bottom line scroll, and they're always winning games, and they've won 30 each of the last two years or whatever, that they're on the forefront of my mind of those Big Ten schools just because they're so good at basketball. Um, let's get to the second round this year, gang. But they're, they're, they're so good at basketball. But you're right. Illinois, Indiana, and Minnesota all deserve as much or more grief than Purdue. Yeah, Illinois had Dick Butkus. Yeah. Well, maybe Indiana. They had, all right, I, Indiana. Let's do Indiana then because Rutgers is, is – all right, to your point, they haven't been in the conference long enough. If there's any big-time Hoosier fans out there – you're going to have to come with a better argument than Neuler did for us to lay off the Hoosiers. But I, as of right now, I motion that Indiana is the punching bag. Is in You know Purdue's mascot? Doesn't he kind of look like Michigan State's mascot? Sparty? I, per, I guess Purdue Pete is his name. And in Sparty, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I didn't know it was Purdue Pete, but I know he holds like the sledgehammer or something, right? In a helmet, yeah. like a work helmet. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the Michigan State guy has a weird something on his head too. But I think facially they look similar. Like they could be brothers. Or cousins, at least. I don't know. Iowa. What has Iowa done? I guess Iowa is always in the top 15, and they always give us a lot of uh, gold during the season because they just don't like to score touchdowns. Um, but So they're, they're, they're a better football program than those other ones that we've named. But I don't think the world would be sad if Iowa stopped playing football. You know what I mean? Ben Spicer would be because he that's his go-to when you guys do coach. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. MyBookie.ag, promo code WARCHANT. Use that when you sign up for the first time. Get an instant cash deposit bonus. March Madness nearly upon us. It is conference tournament week. Knowles in action, as we said. Later today against Virginia Tech. Disrespect. Three and a half points the Hokies are favored by. Come on. Come on, three and a half. Let's take the Knolls straight up at plus 135, everybody, shall we? MyBookie.ag, you can bet anything, anytime, anywhere, NHL. 
You can bet NBA. You can bet futures, esports. They also have a live casino if you're into that kind of stuff. Just use the promo code WARCHANT when you do sign up for the first time to get that instant cash deposit bonus. Promo does require a $50 minimum deposit and rollover requirement of one-time or deposit total, including your bonus for withdrawal. For full terms and conditions, visit mybookie.ag slash about dash us. By the way, real quick on the way out, how crazy is it? And I, I'm not even asking for a comment here, but I think I have a theory that the Ohio State, or sorry, the Nebraska-Iowa Women's Big Ten Championship game drew as many viewers like either a little bit more or a little bit less, but both were over $3 million as the Duke-North Carolina basketball game. Men's. Same amount of viewers. Iowa, Nebraska, yeah. women. Duke-North Carolina men. Now, obviously, we know what's going on with Iowa. They have a person that's just transcended the sport. But it also says something about the men's side. In the, I don't. How do you fix it, man? There has never been – I was just talking to some buddies of mine that are sports fans that can't name six college basketball players. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, I mean, if you eliminated Florida State players and Matthew Cleveland, <laughs> I'd, you know, I'd be like, oh. Caleb Mills, don't forget <laughs> yeah. Caleb Mills. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I was Zach Eady. Um, but they're right, but there ain't actually, many. Don't, the, don't connect names. at Tennessee – the, 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 Filipowski the, at Duke. I don't know anybody he, on Virginia. This Virginia Virginia's got to have one guy that's still been there for eight years and been in a pain in the side. The Beekman, the, Beekman, yeah, Beekman, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the guard. Yeah, but like, how him. crazy is it that that's and and so I saw something on Twitter that made sense. Is like the women's game. Um, Angel Reese has been at LSU for three years. The Cameron Brink girl at Stanford's a big star. She's been there forever. Caitlin Clark, obviously, for four years. Uh, the Juju Watkins at USC is a freshman, but she's averaging 30 a game. Yeah, man. And I was thinking, like, I feel like in the women's game, they're allowed to be stars more than in the men's game. Because I guess in the men's game, you maybe want to keep all the guys happy so nobody's taking 24 shots in a game. Nobody could possibly average 30 points a game in a Power 5 conference of the men's because all their teammates would stop playing because they're like, why does he get all that? You know what I mean? Like, I I don't know why women's basketball lends itself to, to breeding stars, yeah. but back in my day, folks, oh, Chris geez. Jackson, sorry, Mahmoud abdul Rauf, That's right. who used to be Chris Jackson at LSU, he was a 5'11 point guard that averaged 30 points a game, and he played with Shaq. And, she, and he's like, Shaq, if you want the ball, go get my board. Yeah. Like, But he was a, like, they, I don't know. It's just Kenny Anderson averaged like 28 a game. Dennis Scott, you had all these stars. And Christian Leitner, maybe it was just, a, I don't know. It's just, it's it's never felt less important and less relevant. Men's college basketball. And maybe I'm saying that because Florida State's been no, horrible no, to mediocre for the last no. three years. But I, I, don't, I, I don't think that's true. I just think something's broken on the men's side. And it's it's sad it's cool for women's basketball that, that that they have almost, I mean, they've almost equaled, in some cases, equaled or surpassed in ratings, uh, depending on who's playing. But like the the women's national championship game, yeah. got as many, almost as many viewers as the men's, maybe more than the men's national championship game. I don't know why, Aslan. I don't know why. Do that you? Is, uh, I was going to say realignment, but I don't think that's really going to affect things all that much. I mean, maybe just the simple fact that like we have. We have obviously shown just how much more important football is than everything else. Maybe that bleeds through, and maybe I don't know. Maybe it's actually more. It's more so the quality of players because if, like, when they had that college game day on Saturday mornings, it feels so forced and contrived. Yes, correct. And and almost like borderline pathetic. It's like why are you even trying to do this? But if they had college game day on in gymnasiums in the early 90s, I feel like they would have been electric, though. Uh -huh. you know, oh, 100%. Just I think, I mean, obviously a lot of people would agree with this, I think, and they're probably already yelling at us, is that a lot of it does have to do with the the player, the, the best players not staying in the, the at school for more than a year. Yeah, the one-and-done stuff, right. Um, you know, I think Zion would, well, he would have been a senior last year, but, you know, back when we when I grew up especially – you know, Christian Leitner, Grant Hill, they all they stayed four years. Yeah, they pissed so you off Tim forever. Duncan. Yeah, you yeah, but Tim, but but you you they also got really good. Yeah. Like they were allowed to get really really good, so the product was better. Now all the best players are nineteen years old, so they're good. But like, look, man, Scotty Barnes, I bet he scored twenty points at Florida State in a game four times, maybe. I take the under. I'm not sure if I can find maybe that two. Out. He's averaging over that in the NBA. 
you know, because he's obviously he's gotten better, but it's also much a, a much more free game that's spaced out. I don't know. I just I wish college basketball could become more like the NBA, where you have stars again. Like it's fun to watch Luca play. It's fun to watch Jokic play. It's fun to watch uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander and all all these guys that average thirty a game or thirty two a game. College basketball, you lead the league in scoring if you average eighteen. And it just you know back in my day. It was 30. You had to get to 30 to lead your league in scoring. And it's just, it's, uh, it's, anyway, I just was thinking about that. Like, it's, cause I love college basketball, man. Yeah. And, uh, and as we go out, there's a very good, there's at least a good chance, a decent chance that today will be Florida State's last game of the season. I don't think it's going to be the last game of Leonard Hamilton's career. Kenny Payne is about to get fired at Louisville. He's probably already been fired by the time you guys listen to this. Um, and Leonard did lose to him this year, which wasn't great. Uh, but, you know, I just, man, it, I, I would love for Florida State to go on a run in Washington, D.C. That seems far-fetched. But I would like for him to end his career on a positive note. Uh, and let's hope they get so, – they, they at least go win a game up in D.C. Starting today against Virginia Tech, who is probably going to take a ton of threes and hit most of them because that's what happens when they, they play Florida State. Both games this year, Aslan, Virginia Tech and Florida State. Virginia Tech was 11 of 23 from three huh. in both games. Would you would your thoughts on Leonard's future change at all if he made the Sweet Sixteen? Like, do you think he would? Yes. Do you yes. think? He'd, do you think he that would embolden him, or he'd be like, "All right, hell of a run, I'm going to go out." On I this. would love for him if they saw to get to the, so they'd have to win. <laughs> they're about to go on a six game winning streak yeah. in March would be incredible. What a way for him to go out. Or let's just say they win one. They make it to the tournament. They win one game. Let's say they win. One I don't. Game. If he's cutting down a net in DC, that's that would be the. That would be the best. What, what's going to be better than that? Yeah. Was he going to get to the? He's going to win a national championship next year. That would be the perfect way to go out. Yeah. Um, if he's cutting down, I don't care if he loses in the first round. If they make the NCAA tournament, I know that's a weird thing to say. You would think you, yeah, you'd be like emboldened him, like, oh, but he's got to, he got to go it again. Yeah. That what a perfect way that would be to go out. Yeah. Um, don't see that happening, but I've been wrong before, everyone. So hopefully they can uh, keep. Uh, What's his name? Couture for making seven threes today, <laughs> and they can uh, get themselves a win so they can play North Carolina on Thursday. Scott Barnes scored 21 points in the ACC tournament final against Georgia Tech that uh, the Alvarado guy, I think, went berserk in. Yeah. Uh, that was the only game he scored uh, 20 or more points. Yeah, right. That's right. crazy. Probably not going to be back tomorrow. We'll do one more show for you folks on Friday, though. Uh, that's the uh, the goal. I don't know. Maybe we'll do something live Thursday for Friday. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll play it out. Uh, I don't know if we could do that because Brady's got a doubleheader. Hey, unless he's not the in the lineup, away, gang. the headache go away? Yeah. If he's not in the lineup, gang, we can do a three-hour uh, live show. All right. We'll get something for you folks on Friday because we love you, uh, and it's our job as well. Uh, and I'm not going to talk anything about interviews because nobody wants to text me back. But that could apply to numerous things in my life that we're not going to dive into all, all right. that much. So we're done. Uh, Jeff Cameron show back, I think, today. All think, right. Good. I think I think um, one to three o'clock. Tune in. If not, go to warchant.com. See what's going on on the message boards. It's always a great time. Shout out to Noiler. Thanks for uh, giving us some content to talk about on this uh, Wednesday. We appreciate it. He's Corey Maslon. Thanks for listening to Wake Up Warchant presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.